welcome back. This is Introduction to SPSS from Datalog Educational Consult, bringing the ICT and the of steps. This is session four. I remain your tutors, Michael Tayo. In this session, we will be looking at which is the part two of the introduction. We will be looking at constructing the new variable, graphics, statistical inference in SPSS, continuous outcome measures. But for this session, we will be looking at constructing the new variables. At the end of this class, it is expected of the student to be able to compute a new variable, computing a new variable by using built-in functions, computing duration of time difference by built-in functions, and recording a value. Constructing new variable. Sometimes we need to compute new variables from the data entered. For example, in the foundry data set, we might want to compute the ratio of the measure to predict FEV. Alternatively, we might want to group edges into band. SPSS has procedure to construct a new variable from existing variable. For the foundry worker data, we shall compute the variable LVV ratio defined as the as LVV measures over LVV bridge. So how are we going to do that? On our, on our SPSS windows, first you have to open your foundry data set. Opening our foundry data set, this is our foundry data. We click OK. The first output, you see output view. This is our foundry data set. Now, to compute a new variable, we use transform command to control to compute a new variable. So we click on transform, we click compute. That is the next step in computing a new variable. After you've gone to this screen, enter the name FEV ratio in target variable. This is the name of the new variable that we want to compute. We want the variable to be called FEV ratio in the target variable window. If the variable is new, click on type and label to define the type and variable label. To build up mathematical expression, we create the new variable. You can choose variable from the left hand box, then click to move them to the numerical expression window. We can choose any of the keys on the calculator pad in the center of any of the functions from the built-in function box followed by select the function using up and down arrow key from built-in functions window and then click on the button. The expression will appear in the numeric expression window and these are the operators we have in our calculator pad we have some of them in mnemonic form like lt gt and le and uh, lt is less than gt is greater than le is less than or equal to if you remember in the beginning of this course i told us that this lt and gt and le is one of the names that you cannot use to define your variable when you are defining variable and these are the reason they are reserved for a functions like this in our SPSS look at the mnemonic form that you have here do you have GE, EQ, NE, AND or not these are one of the reserve functions that are meant for something you can see that GE the description is greater than or you have EQ to be equal NE to be not equal and means logical and and you have all logical or parentheses you have not or logical not now these are the reason why you cannot use these names to define a variable so now let us define our functions this is what you are expected to do under your target variable you have LVV ratio then you move this value the first one is LVV measures and LVV prediction let us do that LVV ratio our target variable is FVV ratio. Our target variable 
is FEV ratio. Then what is what we have here is going to be FEV. Let's just check. We have FEV. Now we've compute our variable. Computing a new variable by using built-in functions. In the compute procedure, there is a built-in functions window which can be used to create a new variable or to transform the values of an existing variable. Transformations such as the square root or the logarithm are easily made. So easily made. Suppose you wish to go a log. Suppose you wish to do a log transformation of the variable called height. Don't forget our height is in centimeter, which means that we can also create a new variable that will show that our height is in what is in meter. Now these are one of the things we are talking about. But now we want to get a logarithm of our height. So first we click transform from the menu bar and then choose compute from drop down menu. Then you get the compute window. Now what are we gonna do? We type the name say IHT. That is we, the new the name of the new variable in the target variable window. Click on the arrow on the right of the function box to scroll up and down through the function. Select arithmetic followed by ln. That is a, the the short form of logarithm as written in the in SPSS. So to get a logarithm, then you have so many other you have so many other. We have so many other values. Then select the variable to replace. That is height by clicking and then press OK button. Then a new variable LHT will be created, located at the end of variable is just like the other one we did. So let us do this in our SPSS window. First, let me revise how we get our FEV ratio. Let me revise it. Let me recap it for you. Let us undo the changes with. Let me undo the changes that we make here or let me clear this variable okay that has been clear i want to redo it to bring it back to our memory we say we want to transform compute variable in fact the value is still there fvv measures over fvv predictive now the first thing is to enter your new target variable we say our new target variable is fvv ratio then we want to compute FVV ratio as FVV predict FVV measure FVV measure over FVV predictive. So this is our new FVV ratio. Can we press OK? Then we have this execute FVV ratio equals to FVV measure divided by FVV predictive has been executed. We go back to our data editor window. Now we want to get a log for height. Then we go back to our transform. You click on compute variable. What is the new data? We said the variable name for the new data will be LHT. That is the first thing you should do. You should give the variable a name. Also, here you can give the label. You can choose to label it. I can choose to label it as log log of height log of height i press continue i want it to be a numeric okay then i will look for function i want to look for functions here this way you will look for the function logarithm let us click to look for the function and also here you have so many arithmetic functions here let us click on arithmetic function now we want to use the function ln now you have ld logarithm logarithm based on base 10 but we want the just the log value so we click on ln then we use this arrow to put it in into the numeric expression now here you have question mark this question mark will be replaced by our height 
the expression has been given to us logarithm open bracket and close bracket question mark is now expecting you to insert a value into the question mark and that our value is the height of the patient so we insert the value now the question mark has been replaced with height then we press ok and we click ok the output window shows that it has been executed then let us go and fill that in editor data editor window it's going to be in the last column you see now we have a new variable generated for us we have a new variable this is the logarithm of our height this is the logarithm of our height so you can compute a variable from another variable you can combine two or three variables together to form another variable just like when you have age in numbers you can group the age to be in ranges by using compute by using telling the functions which one is less than two which one is like when you can what we do is you we, we, we look at the age range when we do a descriptive statistic the descriptive statistic will show the minimum and the maximum that will guide us on how to we break it into range then how we'll be able to label it computing duration of time difference by built-in functions in the same data set there are some variable date of birth date of assessment it is which are stored in date format one is able to calculate the time difference in days by using the functions function c time dot days the age of patients on the date of assessment can be calculated from the date of birth and assessment date the age of patients on the date of assessment can be calculated from the date of birth and assessment date. Do we get it? When you want to calculate your date of birth, you usually minus the present year from the past year, from the day you were born. That is how you calculate. So if you want to know the age of the patient in the date of the assessment, what we just need to do is the date of the assessment minus the year that the patient was born will tell us the real age of the patient when it did the assessment. This is what this function is telling us to do. As before, we click our transform from menu bar and then compute from drop down. Now, in this time around, in the target variable windows, type a name, say let's use our variable. We want to use the variable to be old, H O W O L D. How old? That is, how old is the patient when it did the assessment? Then select the functions group, time, duration, extraction, followed by C time does day in the function and special variable window using the up and down click. This will put the function with A question mark in parentheses in box name numeric expression, then select the variable to replace. That is date of assessment. Now this is what we want to do. See? Date of assessment minus date of birth all divided by 365 this 365 is we are want it to be represented in here that's why you have 365 here now and the seed time that prefix this is for the function to be able to know that we are dealing with time we are dealing with time that is why you have this you are dealing with time but let us go back we use C time in days so that when we delete, when we divide by 365, the answers will be given us in year. If it is in days and you divide by 365, 365 is, is equivalent to one year. So that's why all these are in days. They are equivalent to each other. So all the value that we have here are equivalent to days. This C time, C time in days, all of them have been equivalent to days. So dividing it by 365, convert it to a year that's why we divide this equation by year so let us do that to do that we said date of assessment minus date of birth let us go back to our SPSS we go to our transform data compute variable the new target variable is how old how old then the first function is the function we are looking for is time duration extraction t 
then we want C time in this. We bring it in. Let me delete this function. We don't use it. We don't need it again. Then here, what we want here is date of assessment. The date that the patient did the assessment, we log it in. Minus, we input another C time in this. Then date of birth. We log it in, then we press OK. Now, do you see that it has been executed? It has been executed. Let's go back and check from our windows. The last column. Now, this, oh, we didn't divide by 365. That is why we have all this. <laughs> That's why we have all this thing in days. You see, it, this is the days 171,741 days. The patient has. So when we divide it in year, that's in 365, that is when we get the age. Let us clear this. Let's go back to transform. Actually, we still see the equation there. Okay. As someone that have a good idea of mathematics we cannot put division here without putting a bracket without closing the bracket so in this place we have to put all the item in bracket then divided by 365 we press ok it has been executed window you see now we have it in here you see we have 49 years 76.23 now all these 15 can be can be hours can be week understand 49 years old and 15 can be 15 days 15 yes this is 49 years old and 15 days 46 year old and 23 days 34 year old and two days so this is the age of the patient when the patient came for the assessment that's what we just compute whenever you compute a new variable from existing data it is important to check to check that what you have created is sensible you also need to check that missing values have not been converted into non-missing values using the data view tab check the value of our work exercise Calculate the duration of the patient in the employment and compare with the values of employment days provided in the data set. Calculate the duration of the patient in the employment and compare with the values of employment years provided in the data set. So, all this you have to use compute to do all this exercise. You can submit the exercise to the company email data log tutors. All the exercises that we given, you can submit your document, that is, you submit your SPSS uh, data set to datalogtutors at gmail.com to show if your answer is correct. If you did it properly, we made the mail it back to you. Recording a value. To assist in data analysis, you also need to group a continuous variable, e.g., age. In a, in, a, in a research whereby the researcher did not give ranges for the respondent, and you only give the respondent to enter their real age, like the, we just enter 24, 25. Now we want to group this by ranges like, okay, zero, we want to be like 15 to 20, 21 to 30. So it makes, it, it, it makes, uh, giving inference to be more easy when you group your age when you group your age to do this it's still under computing variable to do this let transform then we use recode in this type of data two options are now given into the same variable into different variables the first option leads to potentially valuable information being overwritten it is usually best to use second option as it it is then possible to share whether the record has worked correctly by comparing the new and old version. 
Having chosen the second option, the following screen will appear. First, choose an input variable from the list on the left hand side, then press. Then enter the name of the variable for the recorded data under output variable, name, and press change. So, here yeah, you have your variable, which is the age. That is the age. Output variable name, age group, the new variable is age group, and the label. Now press hold and new values. And now, suppose we wish to record age into these bands less than 30. 30 to 39, 40 to 49, then 50 plus. We have option there that says click on range lowest through and enter 29 into the box. Then click value under near value and enter 1. And finally press add. Click on range and enter 30 and 39. You see the range, then click on new value and enter 2. And finally press add. Click on range. Then enter 40 to 49, then click on new value and enter 3 and, and I press. So these are the now when you see ranges lowest through and enter 29, it's telling you that uh, something that is less than 30. That is the value is starting from 29. So you will not see 30 in the value. That is what represents less than 30. So let us stick to this 30. Less than 30, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, then 50 plus. That is the ranges we want to use to record our age. Okay. Under transform, record into different variable. That's the second option. And what is the option? What is are we dealing with? We are dealing with age. We have age at interview. So, that is the value we are dealing with. So, we click H. Then, the name is age, age group. And the label is age group. We've changed it. Then, Hold and new variables. Hold and new variables. Now, the first one is ranges lowest through 29. Ranges lowest through 29. That is the first value. Okay. Hold a new variable. Range is lowest. We have twenty nine. And the value is 1. We had that. Then the next one is ranges from 30. What is our range again? Our range is 30 to 39. 30 to 30. So we have 30 to 39. The value for that is 2. The next one is 40, 40 to 49, the value is 3, we add, then ranges value to 50, that is 50 and above, and the value is 4, we add, then we say continue, yeah, this means you see, lowest through 29 means less than 30. 30 through to 39 is just 30 to 39. 40 through 49, press continue. Then we press OK. So that has been executed. Let's go and check our new window. You see, now we have it recorded here. 
we have it recorded here these are the new variables recorded let's go to our variable view you also see the age group that we have coded it you also see the value here showing doesn't show here but it has been recorded already for us so let us save our changes that is recording new variable so that as selecting a subset of the data in addition to analyzing the full set of data you may want to analyze a subset if for example you want to perform an analysis on exposed cases only that is we don't want to do with non exposed click on the data option at the top of data view screen select cases option and the following screen will appear to make the selection click on the circle with the if condition See. in addition to analyzing the full set of data you may want to analyze a subset in this one we are narrowing the analysis to a group to a value only and that is group one which is exposed cases under exposure group so we say click on the data option at the top of data view screen then on the select cases option and the following screen will appear let us do that so this is our window this is data option and you have so many you have so many options you have so many options so many options so many options then what is the option that we are supposed to click here according to what the instruction is given so we want to select cases under the data option so this is select cases you see these are the cases these are the cases so we are talking about exposure group we want to deal with exposure so you have if condition what is the condition data set name you see all cases if condition random sample of cases based on time and case use fetal label variable what is the instruction let us go back to make the selection click on the circle with the if condition is satisfied button then click the if button the following panel will then appear group one has been entered in the box group to select the exposed cases So let us go back now if condition we click on our if condition exposure group group one continue Save group continue then data set name our if condition we're not using that exposure in our if condition we have not assigned the value to group say group equals to one say continue then we press ok ok this has been executed for us. Let's go back to see the effect of the changes in our data editor. You see, this is, and you see, we have these lines 
all these cross line are the only exposure cases. These are the own exposure cases. So any analysis we run now is targeting the exposure only. It's targeting the exposure only. So in order to return to the complete data set for further analysis, you need to return the select cases option and click the all cases button. That is one to, going back to the initial way the data was before we filter out some data. So this is the end of session four. Exercise, do all the exercise that is given in this lesson and return your data back to the initial, the way it was. That is, you go back to the if condition and select all the cases.